Hi everyone. This is our second day of Bible study in Holy Week. So this is, is on Tuesday and we are going to be looking at scripture in John chapter 13 and reading there. So if you want to get your Bible and we'll just kind of follow along, I'm going to go through a few things that kind of pop out to me in the scripture and uh, I'll have a few questions at the end. If you want to send me an answer, that would be kind of your answer. That'd be kind of fun to hear and uh, to kind of look at how people are thinking through this scripture. All right, so I'm going to read John 13. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you will have no part with me. Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, Those who have had a bath only need to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. All right, so just a couple of things that popped out to me. Well, first of all, we know that it was the beginning or it was just before the Passover festival. Um, Passover, you know, when we look at, when we think of what that meant, of course, we go way back to Exodus. Um, just as that first Passover was the turning point in the redemption of God's people, um, the cross that was coming would be the opening of a new era for believers. And of course, when John wrote this, it was years after the, cru the crucifixion and the resurrection. So he could look back with hindsight and more understanding. That's why we get a few of these comments that he writes in here. So the Passover is near and I'm reminded even from going back to the first chapter of John, how Jesus is portrayed. Um, John the Baptist said when uh, Jesus came to be baptized, he said, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So we have this, um, we have this picture in our minds and, we're, and John puts it all together for us. Um, another thing that we see here, Jesus in, in verse 1, Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. He knows his hour has come. And then again, that's kind of in direct contrast to in chapter 2, where we see what is called, what we often say is the first, first miracle of Jesus, where he turned the water into wine. He was in Cana of Galilee, chapter 2. His mother came to Jesus. They were at this wedding. His mother came and said, they've run out of wine. And Jesus said to her, I'm not remembering exactly the right words, but he said, woman, what does this have to do with me? My hour has not come. So three years ago, just around three years ago, his hour had not come and he recognized that. But now he says, my hour, the hour has come for me to leave this world, to go back to where I belong, back to the Father. And I love that it's included here. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them right until the end. Um, and then we have like uh, this amazing picture of Jesus, what he did, the actions of Jesus. It's pretty well all about what he did, something so amazing. Um, we read that um, the meal is in progress. Now, we don't know if this was the Passover meal 
but it seems to be that it happened on the same night that he was betrayed and arrested. So it was likely on the Thursday night. But we see the focus of the action in the scripture was of Jesus washing the disciples' feet. I don't know if you've ever wondered about this or thought about it, but um, he knew. He knew who the betrayer was. Right in verse 11, um, he said he knew he was going to betray him. He was talking about Judas Iscariot. And that's why he said not everyone was clean. How it felt for Jesus. How he loved all of his disciples. How it felt to wash the feet of the one who would betray him. Just uh, thinking of the love of Christ, how he how he had that for the one he knew would willingly betray himself, Jesus. So the so he he begins to wash the feet of of the disciples, and so Peter has something to say about that, as we kind of see here. And Peter says, you know, you're not going to wash my feet. And Jesus says to him, look. If you want to have a part in the plan that I have in my kingdom and, and be part of me, you're going to let me do this. Let me wash your feet. And, and then Peter says, um, well, not just my feet, but my hands and my head, all I, my head, everything. And I, we see here that Peter's not getting this. He's not understanding what Jesus is doing. He's not, he's not getting that this is spiritual truth. He's thinking in physical terms, not in spiritual terms. Jesus is pointing forward to the cleansing that will happen through his blood that he's going to provide. Um, and so uh, we see Peter's not getting it. But of course, John writing this is getting it. And he's helping us to understand. Um, Jesus says to, um, to he, he says to them, do you, in verse 12, do you understand what I've done for you? Do you understand? So I, I think uh, there's a lot of other details that I could go in today, but I think I'm just going to leave it there. And um, maybe you can contemplate on it and think about it. There's um, See what the Lord is saying to you, what the Holy Spirit says to you. But I, I have two questions for you today. Number one, how did Jesus redefine servanthood in this scripture? I'll say it again. How did Jesus redefine servanthood in this scripture? And secondly, in verse 15, I'll read it to you. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. So my question for you is this one. In this example that Jesus gives his disciples of washing his disciples' feet, is he promoting the idea that we should wash each other's feet. Let me say it again. In this example that Jesus gives his disciples, is he promoting that we should wash each other's feet? So I'd be interested in hearing what you think of that. Um, and you can you can send me an email or um, I don't know, you can call me if you like. Uh, but yeah, let's um, keep the conversation going and uh, let me know what you think about this. But I just kind of, uh, I think there's an overwhelming sense here of the humility of Jesus and the love that he had for us. And I just want to remind you of that. He loves you. He, um, he created you. And yet we see in this scripture, the creator serving the created. And uh, I cannot help but be in awe of that. And thankful that we have a Savior who loves us so much that he would go all the way to the cross. Let me pray with you. Lord Jesus, thank you for who you are. An amazing God who loves each one of his creation. I pray, Lord, as we go about this day, that you would encourage our hearts to truly be uh, what you've called us to be. To be servants, to be followers of the living God. I pray your blessing in each life, in each home. And help us, Lord, to show your love to others. We pray this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Have a great day.